a couple of years ago, I got my first portable monitor. I decided it was really cool. So for the past couple of years, I've actually been collecting quite a few portable monitors. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the features that I think make a portable monitor really good and the price you should expect to pay for the different features. I even put together a spreadsheet to price out features individually. And I'll talk about that more at the end of this video. So if you want to know if a portable monitor is actually a good price, I have a way you can calculate that and figure it out. So here you see all of the monitors that I have evaluated. I have the prices listed with the most current price, but some of these I purchased a while ago, so the prices have probably changed since that time. So for me to test out all of these portable monitors, basically what I did other than using it day to day is I went through each one and I plugged it into a couple different computers and I used a couple different cables. I also spent some time using the menu to navigate to see what the menu is like. I spent some time opening and closing the cases and just seeing what the, the cases and stands were like. And I more or less just tested them out to see what they were like for the computer and what features I like. At the end of my test, here is the main thing that I've concluded with portable monitors. If you're looking for a portable monitor, the number one thing I would suggest for looking at feature wise is the brightness of the monitor. When you go onto the product page, like on Amazon or something, and you look up a portable monitor, what you want to look for is the nits. I think that is like a unit of luminance or something like that. The other way it's described is CD slash M2 or candelas per meter squared or per square meter or something like that. You want to look for this term somewhere on the page. If it's not listed anywhere when you're looking up a portable monitor, what that means is it's probably not very bright so they just didn't want to list it. In my opinion, anything 220 nits or less, it's probably not worth getting for a portable monitor. I think you should really be looking in the three to 500 nits range about that area. I have a couple portable monitors that are 500 nits and I can tell you that the display is gorgeous. It's bright. It looks better than my MacBook Retina display. I really like portable monitors with 500 nits. Some of the features I thought I might be impressed with with portable monitors that I ended up not really caring about was, for example, the resolution. Every portable monitor I tried was 1080p or higher. I have a few 4K portable monitors, and don't get me wrong, 4K is awesome, it's really nice, but when you have like a 15 inch screen, it's honestly kind of ridiculous. In my personal opinion, you probably don't need a 4K monitor unless you have like 25 inches or bigger. So unless you have a humongous portable monitor, which is probably no longer very portable, you just simply don't need 4K. Now, I'm sure there are some exceptions. Maybe you are a photographer or you do video editing or something like that. Maybe you just love real estate and your eyes are like Superman eyes and you can see really small things. Then sure, 4K is awesome. It's really nice. I think for most people, it's just not necessary. It's extra money that you're paying for a feature that you're probably not gonna use. Another thing I noticed on all of these portable monitors is that the menu is horrible. Navigating a menu on a portable monitor, it's horrible. And you think that might not be a big deal, but on a lot of these portable monitors, every time you plug it in, the brightness is turned down and you have to manually turn it up. So you need to use the menu. So that's something actually worth considering. And honestly, the best menu systems were the ones with the portable monitors with touch screen because you could just actually use the menu on the touchscreen itself. Another thing to keep in mind with portable monitors is the surface of the screen. You have a lot of kind of like plastic or matte surfaces, and then you have some portable monitors with a really nice glass surface. Now you are going to be paying more money if you get a glass surface, but it also reduces the glare. So it works in a lot more environments. If you're kind of in a sunny or bright environment, you may need this 
glass surface so you don't have as much glare as you do with your matte or plastic surface. Ultimately, what I found in testing portable monitors, I think the sweet spot for portable monitor is probably in about the $250 range. You can get a good monitor that has, you know, three to 500 nits in that price range. There are a lot of similarities with almost all the portable monitors, such as using USB-C or mini HDMI or things like that. These are pretty common. One thing to be aware of is the more expensive or higher end portable monitors usually have like a magnetic folding case, which is actually pretty nice. Or some of the cheaper ones just have like a kind of cheap cardboard or plastic case that's not magnetic and just flaps over. Probably not a huge deal, but it is really nice to have those magnetic cases. With the portable monitors I tested, I had a few that were the brand U-Perfect. I actually really liked it. Uh, here's one of my favorite ones. It's a pretty nice U-Perfect. It's really slim. Uh, this was in, I think, the $200 range, and it's pretty bright. It has a good display. There was another one on kind of the more high-end monitors. Uh, this one's uh, AOQ. Also has a really nice display. This one was 4K. If you do have a question about portable monitors, feel free to write a question in the comment section below. I really like them. I have one for my wife to have on her desk. I use it a lot for like home lab stuff. When I need a monitor really quick, I hook it up to my camera a lot. It's nice to have a monitor that's really portable, can plug in via USB-C power. That's it for my video. I hope this helped out some. If you want to get into some more technical nerdy details and prices and stuff, I'm going to show you my spreadsheet really quick. This is a spreadsheet you can download to help you price out a portable monitor for yourself. But it's kind of boring, so you can stop watching now. But here's the spreadsheet. Here are all the monitors I've tested. This is the price that is actually listed on Amazon. And then this is the price that I've basically calculated based on the features that it has. So you can see here in red, these are the monitors that I think are a little bit overpriced. And the ones in green are the ones that are probably actually a pretty good deal based on the features it has. Now, if you want to download this spreadsheet for yourself, I, I've got the link below, but you can go here to file and then you want to do make a copy. So that way you can edit it yourself. Real quick, I wanna go over the features that I've kind of put together. I've come up with prices per the feature and I was able to do this basically by just looking over every single product and kind of coming up with what different companies place the value on for the feature. So if you've got your standard 1080p monitor, that's about $100 you double it usually if you go to 4K. Now for screen size, I started out at 13 inches being about the smallest, and to go up a couple of inches, you're adding on usually around $25 per every couple inches. Now nits is a big thing to me. I think this is really important how bright your screen is. If it's not listed or if it's pretty low, I just put $0. So, so you could expect maybe a really dim monitor that's just 1080p uh 15 inch like around 125 dollars and, th and that's about the lowest you're going to see portable monitors for if you're going to get something with a, around 500 nits you can expect to pay about 50 dollars extra than that and if you download this spreadsheet yourself you can change all these prices to put the value that you think it's worth so that way you can come up with a price that's right for you uh, color gamut some of them aren't listed. Some of them don't have the full RGB spectrum. So I just put out $5, some do. It's just a bit more. Uh, the, the higher end or the nicer portable monitors, they will have DCI-P3, about $35 is what I price that at. The other thing is the frames. Um, the cheaper frames are gonna be a bit thick. Even the thick ones, I mean, they're still just slightly bigger than a centimeter. They're not that big but you've got some slim, I put ultra slim and super ultra slim. I don't even know what that means. I just kind of try, yeah, whatever. And then 
here are some additional features. These are things that not all of the portable monitors had, but some had. A few that I've tried have touchscreen. That seems to be about $100 if you want that feature. You got QLED, FreeSync, that's if you want to do gaming. Wi-Fi, if you want to cast to your screen. Um, auto orientation, I had one portable monitor with that. But yeah, I, I think you get the idea. So let's go back to monitors. I've got these priced out. As you can see, I, I, I do have three U-Perfect. And for the most part, they're a pretty good deal. I was pretty happy with the U-Perfect uh, monitors. Um, what I went ahead and did, I got my own recommendations. Like if, if I was to build my own portable monitor, I'd say it's 1080p, 15 inches, I would go about 500 nits, uh, DCI-P3, make it slim with a glass screen, and all of these features, it would come out to be just over $250. So for me to get all the features I want, I would expect to pay about $250. Now, if we go to Amazon, with the, spare, with the spreadsheet I've created, we can go pick out a portable monitor and kind of decide if it's a reasonable price or not. Just kind of scroll, 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 scroll. Hey, we'll pick this one, a uh, Suzori 15 inch. So we'll, we will look at the, oh, $50 off. Hey, that's not too bad. So this looks kind of plasticky. You can see it's got, doesn't seem to have a fancy screen, but here's what we want to do to price this out. So I'll come back here to my spreadsheet. We'll just say Sazori. That's the best name of all time. They've got this price at 180, but minus $50 with the coupon. So 130, we're gonna say for the listed price 130. Okay, we're at zero dollars right now, but this is a 1080p monitor, boom. Okay, this is also 15 inches. So right now, that's, if it has any additional features to this, then it starts becoming a good deal. So nits or candelas per meter squared. So let's have a look and see if this is listed. Does it have nits? No. Does it have candelas? Yes, average brightness 300. Not too shabby. So 300. Color gamut, let's have a look. Color gamut, ooh, NTSC, 72%. I don't think I actually have that listed, but we'll, we'll put it in this category. The frame, it's not slim, standard plastic, lame. Uh, the screen, is this a glass screen? I don't think it is. The word glass does not show up anywhere here. We're going to say, oh, so it doesn't have that feature. Let's see, does it have any of these features? So let's look on the product page again, see if this has any features. Normal, 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 normal. Does it have free sync? I don't think so. No, does it have Wi-Fi? So if we look at this, this is a pretty run of the mill, about as cheap as you can get portable monitor. So if we look with all the features that it has, I've got priced out about $160. If you apply the coupon, it's about 130. So it's a pretty decent deal considering it's 300 nits. I probably like to go a little bit brighter than that, but you're looking at a decent entry level portable monitor right here. I mean, obviously I haven't tried this, I don't know, but price-wise per features, it seems like a pretty good whatever. So if you wanna use this spreadsheet, I like making spreadsheets. I hope this spreadsheet helps. You can put in whatever feature you want, assign a price to it. You can change the prices around here to the value that you feel it is. For me, I might even put a 4K value as the same as 1080p, because I really don't care about 4K for such a small monitor. 
But there you go. Spreadsheets are for nerds. I'd like to think I'm a nerd. If you stay to the end of this video, you deserve a medal or something. I'm going to find out how to stop recording so you can stop listening to me. See ya.